Namas everyone. Welcome to the Chadwick Podcast. This is your host Kushal Mehra. Today we are going to talk about a book. Uh, the book is called What If There Was No Congress? The Uncensored History of Independent India. And to ch- chat with us, we have the author of the book, Priyam Gandhi Modi. She's a Gandhi and a Modi. So she's qualified to talk about the Congress and the BJP book. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So welcome, Priyam. First of all, congratulations. This is your fourth book. And I think we are discussing your second or third book. Which one are I we think discussing? We're discussing? We're discussing the second book, but we had two discussions during the last one. Yeah. So first of all, congratulations. Uh, so now uh, so now that uh, you have written four books in five years, mm-hmm. as uh, as you were telling me, how so uh, how do you feel uh, as an author or as a writer? How? From book one to let's say book four, um, has your style changed or has anything changed from that perspective? Yeah, yeah. So I definitely think that I, uh, my writing has gotten much more crisper, in the sense that I don't beat around the bush anymore in trying to make a certain point. Um, second, I have realized that, uh, especially on the topic that I write, there's like lots of controversial information. So it is best to put references on the same page. Otherwise, it just gets really confusing, you know, for the lawyers to do a legal check and for the publishers to do a legal check. And I wasted months in putting together references. So that is a very big issue. So that I have learned. And uh, I think the third philosophical takeaway from this is that... um, the pen is indeed mightier than the sword. But uh, so, you know, I, I, I'll i share my experience as a podcaster. Yeah. So when I started, by the way, horrifying, uh, I mean, I once I went uh, and started looking at my first few podcasts, I was like, oh, my God, I can't even bear myself how horrible I am in there. So. Over the years, the more you do something, they say you usually get better at that craft, whether it's writing or speaking. So I was maybe looking at that from that perspective. So uh, do you feel more confident now when you write? Like uh, maybe the researching is easier or that kind of stuff? Uh, Yes, I do. I do. I kind of um, just sort of naturally know what type of resources to look at and where I will find a lot of information that I want to write about. Um, so I definitely feel more confident, but I want to also try and give you another negative, honest answer that, uh, I don't know if it is the age or the speed at which I write, or I don't know what it is, but I still don't feel, uh, like a serious writer. Like I don't feel that, um, my work is taken as seriously as it should be, um, despite churning out some very serious book. So um, I don't know. I don't have enough gray hair, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can go. People dye their hair black, and aajkal to waise bhi multiple colors ka fashion you should you should consider. <laughs> so the white strands of hair. <laughs> yeah, because people who have like four, five, six books. You know, they are usually <clears throat> fossilized folks. Um, that, that is such so a I nice way of like, seeing your Buddha uncle, auntie. So I feel when I take books to people and say, this is my fourth book or whatever. And plus it's four books. Plus they've a lot of them have been translated in multiple languages as well. So when I have a stack of books, it's about eight or nine books. So... Uh, when I take that, I usually give gifts. I give a big stack of my books to, as gifts, so I ne- never have to buy gifts for people. So uh, <laughs> when I so when I give them these gifts, you know, they're like, ah, oh, okay, TK, you write whatever, good for you, good going, congratulations. That's pretty much it. Like, I, it's never taken with the kind of seriousness that I feel that a lot of other people who have this much work um, are taking. I actually uh, will back you up on this. I am a nerd. I read on average 50 books every year now. So for me, this is like second nature. In fact, I respect uh, authors 
probably in, in the Indian podcasting landscape, I'm the only one who covers the maximum number of books and does that. And which is why publishers uh, love me the most because they're like, you're the only guy who covers books consistently. You know, there are others who will hop onto a popular book bandwagon. Yeah. There are others who will yeah. be like, isse clicks mil rahe, to main iske mein baat karta hu. Mera completely yeah. opposite. मैं consistently books cover करता हूँ, so मेरे पास उल्टा होता है, मेरे पास authors consistently आते हैं क्योंकि बोलते हैं नहीं, ये तो known book cover करने वाला है, but uh, Sam Harris का मैं example देता हूँ, Sam Harris is a very popular guy, a very well known guy, you know he started off as a book author and now it's been ages since Sam Harris has written a book and he himself he has a very big podcast also now. Which is called uh, Making Sense Podcast. And uh, he, in one of his podcast sessions, has said that since my uh, podcast has come up, I have stopped writing is because the the impact, quote, of uh, that medium nowadays in terms of audiences is, is very difficult. Uh, is very alluring and even a guy like Sam Harris who's such a prolific author at one point of time has gone into the other side so I'm actually very glad that you've stuck to the writing genre because in today's video audio world having you know a lot of people think I'll make a 10 minute video 15 minute video 30 minutes video uh, and, and I, which is why I asked you because I was following your work right I've been consistently following how yeah. what you have written and all of that so i was actually very happy and i'm actually proud of the fact that you're beating the trend because you just cannot explain things in 15 minutes you need to write a damn book you cannot and yeah and also i've thought about this a lot kusha like i put in serious thought into this and i genuinely believe that good films and good books are the only two means that can give the kind of longevity that can last even after you die, okay? Um, in terms of the message, not in terms of your own fame, in terms of the message that you're trying to convey. So yes, podcasting is, why, having said that, I feel like the other mediums that are out there, like, you know, podcasting is there and writing opinion pieces is there and making OTT shows and, etc there are lots of things now you know uh, reels etc it's all great it's very very nice it helps you build the mood in like a large chunk of people you know build opinion but i feel that if you want your message to last 50 years 80 years 100 years then i feel that it's just films and books that can do that so now about the book why this title <laughs> You know, at one point, I was like, is Priyam, uh, did Priyam think of the title when she was listening to uh, John Lennon's Imagine? Imagine there's no country, no religion. So, like, she just had it one extension. Imagine there's no Congress. I'll be, again, I'll be really honest with this. So, I thought of this in 2022. And this is when I was still doing a lot of the tours for uh, the COVID situation that I had written about last time. I was still traveling a lot. I was still following the prime minister's work a lot. And uh, while I was following his work, he gave one really fiery speech in the parliament saying, Congress na hoti, to ye nahi hota, Congress na hoti, to wo nahi hota. It took like a nice 10 minute, very, very fiery speech. And I said, hey, wait, did Mahatma Gandhi say something like this too? That Congress nahi honi chahiye. And... Um, yeah, so, and I think in his speech, he also says that Mahatma Gandhi ke ke anusar Congress na hoti to blah, blah, blah. So, so I said, interesting, interesting. So I said, let me just write a book to expand on whatever he's saying. And uh, see why two people who are pro perhaps the most popular leaders that our country has ever seen, Mahatma Gandhi and Prime Minister Modi, um, if their thoughts sort of intersect at one point then it does need some thinking so that's where the book came about and that's where the title for i borrowed it from the prime minister's speech congress na hoti to so the english one is still what if there was no congress but the hindi one is exactly that congress na hoti to so now with a book like this uh, in hindsight 
Now, if somebody comes back to you, you know, somebody from, let's say, the Congress, let's say the National yeah. Herald reviews your book and the National Herald tells you, well, uh, Priyam Gandhi Modi has written this book. What if there is no Congress? But she has only picked out the flaws in all or the court flaws or supposed flaws uh, as per her point of view the, of what the Congress has done. But the Congress has done many correct things also. How would you respond to that? Um, in my view, uh, I wanted to highlight the portions that impact national security even today. And that's essentially what the book does. The only sections that I've taken and that I've gone into are sections that have caused major, massive national security issues for us and which continue to be national security issues for us. So, you know, that is a little bit of content about the book. Yes, I do get a lot of these questions that, you know, we have done a lot of good work, so you have done it. But um, again, like, you know, I think I don't want to beat around the bush. I'll be pretty honest that this is my ideological stand. I believe in this ideology. I am unapologetic about it. I don't like the Congress. I will never like them. I think Neither that do they I. Have caused, I, I, I. I mean, they have caused national security issues for us. Like we are in this big bad neighborhood at this point in time because the Congress has put us in this big bad neighborhood. It wasn't going to be as bad if they didn't mishandle the situation so badly. So, um, yeah, so my ideology is permanent and I don't feel ashamed to write about it. So, okay. And, so ne the next thing is that it's not like the Congress and their ecosystem haven't written their side of the story over and over. I mean, come on, they put it in history textbooks over the years. You know, they packed institutions with those kinds of minds to influence the next generation and the next generation with that kind of thinking, you know. So, I mean, it's about time that the other side <laughs> and people like uh, me who are completely um, unapologetic about being on this side, right about it. You know, uh, see, I don't want to focus much on the scams and scandals bit. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because a lot of scams that you have written, uh, some of the scams I do want to talk about, but only the scams till 1975. Because see, popular memory since buffers, right? We know buffers, we know 2G. Mm -hmm. Average Indian bachche ko buffers, 2G... Uh, mm -hmm. Commonwealth Games, you, you remember those expensive toilet tissue rolls yeah. costing 10, 10,000, 15, 15,000. Wo sab pata hai. But uh, I want to go into the latter half of the book, then I will come to the pre partition yeah. or pre partition bit. So let's yeah, yeah, yeah. talk about the scams before naya, before buffers, especially Jeep scam ke mein batao, 1948. Wala. Ki ko hai ka ki, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, see, first of all, uh, Krishna Menon was a really shady character. Uh, not only was he being, he, he was being groomed by the KGB because they thought he's going to be Nehru's successor. Okay, so the KGB thought that he's going to be our man and they were grooming him. So he was obviously working at their behest. Second, he was making deals with uh, the Viceroy, uh, Mountbatten, that mere se ye karao main ye karne ko ready hu main aise nehru ji ko influence karne ko ready hu um in exchange for making me high commissioner so you know, he, was, he is a shady fellow you know now uh, as high, he got that post he influenced nehru on a certain important matter and he got the post of the high commissioner in london because mountbatten gave it to him this was a transactional thing now as high commissioner obviously he looked at it uh, looked at it as uh, a cow to milk that post and um, he made this jeep uh, transaction he bought uh, jeeps for our armed forces now i'm not going to get into the numbers because i'll have to open the book and sort of look at the highlights and get into the numbers of it but i'll tell you essentially what the uh, essence of this was that he bought um jeeps which was supposed to be brand new Jeeps, but when they arrived, they were not only not working, but they were also refurbished Jeeps and not even all of them arrived. And the middle, com the, the company that he bought them from, they were, they were agents. They were not the direct manufacturers of the Jeep. So that company went MIA. So then, after India paying all of that money, so then they 
क्लैमर्ड एंड फाउंड एन अदर एजेंट या सो इस बीच में इवेंचुअली वी गॉट बेरली लाइक सिंगल डिजिट परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल जीप्स दैट वी ऑर्डर्ड बाय वी आई मीन इंडिया एंड दोज आल्सो डिडंट वर्क एंड दे वर इन सच बैड कंडीशन दैट द आर्म फोर्सेस रिफ्यूज्ड टू एक्सेप्ट देम सो दिस वाज अ बिग स्कैम इंक्वायरी भी बिठाई थी एंड इंक्वायरी हुई भी एंड ऑब्वियसली पंडित जी क्लोज द इंक्वायरी डाउन प्रीमेच्योरली एंड देन despite doing such a big scam he was made krishna menon was made the defense minister of india uh, by pandit jawaharlal nehru big mistake because in 62 he had a very big role to play in um in the 62 war as well and why our military wasn't prepared why our army wasn't prepared uh, why the you know aircraft that we had bought from russia did not come on time so he had a big role to play in that yeah now the thing about this scam chapter as i was going through it what 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 it reminded me of is how systematically you know we talk about godi media i was trying to dig up archives you know ki ye scam ka kya hua before scott a lot of coverage under the media so there i will not say that the media did not cover bofors blah 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 uh wo sab nahi tha they they did uh, wo log ne cover kiya magar i was trying to you know see ki acha iske pehle uh, agar koi scam hote the uh, i was struggling yeah. to find a I lot of things like so so what like i wanted to confirm this from you like did you also find the same problems when you were researching yes yes and um, see even even in information which is as late as just pre bofors also there is, there was a struggle of finding that information like for example the bofors scam became such a big deal yeah it was it happened on that scale yes everything okay but just before that uh indira gandhi also was in a mess because of the submarine purchases you know so there are these hindi papers that very few hindi papers and hindi channels that covered this dubdubi scam that's what they called it the submarine scam so uh, rajiv gandhi tried to cover this up and uh, you know that's when in in that backdrop Bofors happened. He was already under attack that Indira Gandhi had purchased these submarines. Um, she had compromised on the quality, like that they couldn't go as deep as they should, that the armed forces had asked for, and all of that. So Rajiv was defending her mother's, his mother's, uh, you know, stance. And in that backdrop is when the Bofors deal happened, when all eyes were anyway on him. So. which is why it became you know so popular in the media i want to read this bit from your teja scam this was this was priceless the teja scam i mean i was like kya scam hai so this is the teja scandal 1966 i'm going to read uh, a small excerpt from the book jayanti dharma teja was a scientist and shipping magnate who enjoyed a very close relationship with the nehru gandhi family she was first introduced to nehru at a high profile party high profile party in delhi as someone who had returned to india after pursuing a prestigious scientific career abroad he instantly became part a part of nehru's close group of businessmen to the likes of jrd tata gd billa and ramkrishna dalmia teja promised nehru to revolutionize the indian indian shipping industry for which he was given a huge loan of 20 crore it may be interesting to note that so far teja had no demonstrable experience or even any particular interest in shipping as per the as per a report when the loan was requested nehru had allegedly instructed his cabinet and this is the i mean kya style hai thoda kuch de do so nehru instructs his cabinet thoda kuch de do and the little something translated into the indian government investing 20 crores as a loan to him Teja brought on board Dutch engineers and the Japanese giant Mitsubishi and by late 1962 
Jainti shipping controlled 40 percent of India's shipping. Following the success, Teja made attempts to diversify into the thermal power industry but failed. He and his business partners in Jayanti Shipping Corporation absconded, evading taxes worth crores of rupees, leading the Indian government on a wild goose chase around the globe to recover the money. If there was ever a classic case of crony socialism of India, I think this just fits the bill. This is so apropos. And... I think there's a section in the book where I've also written to for people to get an idea of how Pandit Nehru chose his men. After he was impressed and chose Teja at the party, not only did he tell his cabinet that you give them these crores, give them and the shipping industry also give them their hands, but in that 1962 period, uh, especially during the war, I think in uh, I think within a year or so, Teja was asked by the Prime Minister of India to make trips to Russia to negotiate this, why the MiGs were not coming on time, when will they come, to make that deal, all of that. So he was part of the Krishna Menon Pandit Nehru circle and also was doing this these diplomatic type activities without really holding an official diplomatic position. Yeah, it, it it's fascinating that people, I don't think so, a lot of people even must have heard, which is why I wanted to start with the scandals where people, uh, I think people of India ought to know, and as they say, people who don't know their history, whether political or cultural, are just doomed to be perished as a society and and it's it, and it, this is the systemic control of information dissemination in india which is why i had to do the, that entire godi media monologue where i explained ki i mean i i i'm no, I, I vote for the bjp i don't care bjp doesn't run my house i have been very critical of them on multiple occasions so when somebody says na suddenly after 2018 19 godi media i was like godi that's all that has changed the media has a much bigger problem but now let's go to the first one again this was such a beautiful historical bit because this bit most people will not know because they always know the later uh, voting where, again, Patel was voted more by the... Go ahead, go ahead. You wanted to make a point. So I'll add one more, um, you know, piece of information to this uh, event since we are talking about Teja here. that he also financed whatever little of Sanjay Gandhi's education in London. And he also got in the internship at the car manufacturing company, which Sanjay Gandhi couldn't complete. Sanjay Gandhi could not complete the internship that Teja got him, financed his living, etc. And made internship, bounced and came back. This is also so apropos for this entire family and the clan. I mean, this is like, this is a classical thing that they do. Uh, I mean, it's just it's such a wonderful. This country was run by these people for so many years. Yeah. And we would just be like, ha ha, sehleng ye thoda. But now I want to go to the early bit of the book. Again, why I loved this bit was when you talk about pop cultural political history, right? Everybody will talk about Azadi ke baad ya Azadi ke pehle kaun banega Pradhan Mantri ka vote hua tha aur tabhi sab ne Patel ko diya tha ek Nehru ne ek ko mila tha magar Gandhi ji ne override kiya. That is not fun. This is fun in your book where you have written in 1928 too, Motilal Nehru had renewed his efforts for his son but the Congress leaders insisted that Motilal be the president instead, which was what ended up happening. In 1929, however, when Jawaharlal's name finally came up for presidency, the two other contenders were Gandhi and Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Jawaharlal won three votes. Patel won five and Gandhi won ten. On being declared elected, Gandhi resigned and pushed for Jawaharlal to lead. Gandhi ji, yaha pe bhi setting chalu Gandhi ji ki. This was Something. the first but not yes. the last time when Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel had to yield power <laughs> to Jawaharlal on Gandhi's behest. The second time was in 1936, just a year before the general elections were scheduled in India. Despite coming to a consensus that the party would vote in Patel on the eve of the presidential elections, Gandhi summoned Patel and pleaded with him to withdraw his candidacy 
एंड सपोर्ट जवाहरलाल जिनसेड सो बेसिकली 1928 से 29 से तो गांधी जी ने जवाहरलाल नेहरू को ऐसे अपने ऊपर उठा उठा के उठा उठा के चलाया था सो so, मतलब इंटरनल पार्टी में भी इनको कोई खड़ा नहीं करता था विच इज वाई आई वो आगे वाले की बात नहीं करनी है इस वाले की बात करनी है सो ऑनेस्ट डिड यू बिफोर रिसर्चिंग दिस न्यू अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर वोट नो नो आई डिट नो आई डिट नो आई डिट नो एंड आई फाउंड दिस गोल्डन पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन इन अ बुक कॉल्ड बोस एंड नेहरू और नेहरू एंड बोस और समथिंग लाइक दैट इट्स अ स्मॉल बुक इट्स अ ब्लैक कलर बुक देयर इज अ बंगाली ऑथर पैरेलल लाइव्स आई थिंक इट्स कॉल्ड पैरेलल लाइव्स नेताजी एंड पंडित समथिंग बोस एंड नेहरू और नेहरू एंड बोस समथिंग लाइक दैट आई थिंक आई हैव अ रेफरेंस ऑफ दैट इन द बुक आई हैव एडेड इट बट व्हेन आई रीड इट इन दैट आई वाज शॉक्ड एंड इन and that book also gives a lot of very interesting insight kyunki fir dekho natural question ye hota hai ki aisa kyu kiya gandhi ji ne matlab agar aise utha utha kar utha utha kar chalana pada kisi ko to kiya kyu what was his compulsion right like i wanted to understand the mind of mahatma so that why like why did he pick him like kya obsession tha aisa and i realized that yeah okay motilal nehru was a big financier and uske bete ko tum thoda wo jab jab tak zinda hai tab tak aap chadao to theek hai hota hai but after motilal nehru died if you see the letters that are exchanged between pandit nehru and mahatma gandhi the vibe of those letters is you know what pandit ji is telling mahatma gandhi that ab mere pita ji nahi rahe आप मेरे पिता समान हैं मुझे तो राजनीति करनी ही नहीं है आप बोलते हैं इसलिए मैं करता हूँ यू नो इफ यू आर नॉट होल्डिंग मी आई डोंट वांट टू डू पॉलिटिक्स आई वांट टू गिव इट अप यू आर माय एवरीथिंग यू नो इट वाज लाइक अ वेब ऑफ इमोशनल ब्लैकमेल but but uh, yeah you are right uh, the book is uh, i think rudrangshu mukherjee nehru and bose parallel lives it is by Peng- penguin house so uh, it's a penguin house book but yeah <laughs> when i read this i was like damn i didn't know this 1928 mein bhi ye hua tha and and it's fascinating that listen uh, th- this family and and its take over of the congress and and the entire party itself because i mean um, again how you know this is a very interesting thing so going taking you back to the first hypothetical where i played the role of a congressman now there are a few congressmen who actually you praise a lot in this book you 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 are not antagonistic in that sense to sardar vallabhbhai patel people forget he was a congressman <laughs> lal bahadur shastri you're not antagonistic to him in fact i've noticed uh, somewhere in the middle of the book when economic reforms come you're not even nasty to i think dr manmohan singh or narsimha rao in that sense you know you 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 you're pretty balanced in that but why is it that congressmen only take offense See, i'll ask i've given you four names that you have uh, praised in the book as congressmen you're like nahi ye to theek kaam kar rahe the ye log hamesha acha hi karte the in that sense why do you think so when do you think in your research where you came across where the strangle hold of the family on the congress was like iron iron tight like no scope left uh okay i will answer this question but uh okay fine let's get into this one then um i think after pandit ji got indira to stay with him and made her the congress president and as congress president when she started to shake and dismantle democratically elected governments in states and he allowed all of that um that's when i thought that this is it ha huh. so the point i wanted to make about the last section that we spoke about about uh, gandhi ji and pandit ji's relationship is also that ha hum bolte hai ki bhai bogi ko push kar kar ke kar kar ke kar kar ke mahatma gandhi brought him to that point where he made him the prime minister of the country but see the national security compromises was so large so large 
that within one year Mahatma Gandhi also, Gandhi also realized कि ये हमने कुछ गलत किया है and just before he died he wrote a pretty long piece about how Congress should be disbanded how it should be turned into Lok Seva Sangh how that Lok Seva Sangh which is a social service organization how it should be structured at the, the village level you know at, at every level as in so he gave a pretty detailed uh, uh, how do you sermon ki aisa hona chahiye congress ko disband karke because unhone dekha na he saw the one year of pandit ji's prime ministership and all the compromises that he made with regards to kashmir with regards to balkanizing the country um, etc all right all right so now you you focus a lot on the partition now here is somewhere i now you say uh, like do you think it's fair to pin the partition on the congress do you think it's fair don't you yes. think it was inevitable yes. no i mean it, yes okay okay fine partition yes it was inevitable but there is evidence and this is not from indian records this is from british records the british has said this that even if we gave a matchbox size pakistan to mohammad ali jinnah he would be okay with it there was absolutely no need to give him the amount of land that we have given him without total exchange of population second um there were we had a lot of bargaining chips that we did not use when we were on the table for instance um the gilded baltistan area where the brits were running nuclear stations because everybody was in the race for the atom bomb think kiang udar border area mein uranium mining ho raha tha udar hi testing karti thi soviets also so everybody was in the race for the atom bomb tab 30s mein hum agar yahi table pe rakh ke negotiate kar sakte ke aapko sirf ye area chahiye na aapko aapke stations chalane hai right you want your network to be active you want that data you want to put it back give it back to your country you want this area right okay we will give you this area on a long lease on a 99 year 100 year 200 year lease we will give it to you in exchange for cutting down pakistan to size geography mm. literally we could have negotiated that easily the other negotiation mm. we could have had we had another very big bargaining chip with us and which was that the provincial government in northwest frontier province was a congress government jab पार्टीशन के वक्त मतलब डिसाइड हो रहा था कि आपको भारत से जुड़ना है या यू वांट टू गो विद पाकिस्तान द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स हैड टू वोट द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स वो कांग्रेस रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स दे वुड हैव वोटेड टू जॉइन इंडिया बट फॉर देम रूल बदला गया कि उस उस इलाके के लिए हम प्लेबिसाइड करेंगे यू नो एंड देन खान अब्दुल गफार खान the gandhian that he was he said nahi hum to plebiscite mein hamara dalenge hi nahi we will uh, uh, not contest we will not put our name also to we to handed northwest frontier province to pakistan on a platter so these were very strong bargaining chips this is what uh, the they wanted they wanted that access to central asia they wanted that access to the middle east middle east and all of that northwest frontier province is a very important uh, chunk of land you know that we should have used as a bargaining chip to cut pakistan down to size so yes the responsibility and the accountability of uh, partition goes to the congress and yes sardar patel was also in favor of that decision yes the rest of the congress leadership was also in favor of that decision but essentially that decision was made by pandit jawaharlal nehru when he went to shimla with Ma- the viceroy and his wife Hmm. You talk about the grip the viceroy and his wife had uh, on Pandit Nehru. 
Now you rely on that one book. Who can see P se naam hai? I forgot the name of the gentleman uh, or the lady, oh, Patricia or something. Who what was that book you rely on? Yeah, about there the... are two books. One is um, the last days of the British Raj. Yeah. And uh, that is one. And the other for this piece of information about the relationship and the dynamic between the Mountbatten's. And Nehru, the Mountbatten uh, Hicks, uh, uh, Pamela Hicks, Mountbatten's uh, great grand great granddaughter. I guess she has written about it as well. She has written about it. It is in her book. I have directly quoted from her book that my father would often tell my mother. Yeah, she is a daughter of the Mountbatten. She would. She has written in her book that my father would often tell my mother that. Uh, uh please see on difficult issues like kashmir she's written kashmir also that please mm-hmm. see if you can convince jawahar lal about this yeah so i i want to read this bit like in totality i i want to read in fact so overpowering and crucial was edwina's role in influencing nehru's thoughts from this point forward that her daughter pamela hicks in her personal accounts revealed the deep love that edwina and nehru had for each other she confessed that her mother had several lovers in the past and that did upset her father terribly but her father had uh, became quite friendly with nehru okay i don't know what's going on with these three people but it's very interesting pamela went on to say that with her father so busy her mother was often lonely and so was nehru who had been a widower for over a decade by now the famous fable has it that every night at 2 am nehru would write an incredibly romantic letter to edwina revealing his deepest feelings and insecurities coupled with the tender language of a lover it is understood that a stack of these letters were found by edwina's bedside when she died as pamela put it often with regard to policies her father would state his opinion in conversation with nehru but it would be edwina who would drive the point home by playing to his emotions and deeply influencing his being Pamela reiterated that the relationship between Edwina and Nehru was very useful to her pragmatist father often when it was particularly tricky to get Nehru's consent Lord Mountbatten would say to Edwina to try to get Jawahar Lal to see that this is terribly important now i personally i have been very clear that i don't care what a politician does in his or her personal life man listen man or woman if you're having consensual sex i don't give a shit about it but the reason i read this bit is that i care for what happens to my country that's why i care about this i don't give a shit man woman or man go have sex with the whole world for all i care i don't care here this man mount batten was like acha chal edwina ko bhejte hain ye sala to udhar hi patega so this is very dangerous that our honorable prime minister was basically i was like okay you got to get shit done go to project edwina i mean what the hell see i'll give you more information about this i think i've written a little bit about it in the book but if you go into the sources that i have um referred to it essentially says that mount batten was such a workaholic person in life and such a social climber that he had almost become like asexual so his colleagues Say, used to say that about him that he had become asexual because he was a crazy workaholic okay so which is why perhaps he did not have a problem if his wife chose to entertain herself <clears throat> with whatever she liked but because he didn't care he said are abhi karne hi wali hai to matlab might as well use it to our advantage that that's how things roll in this great uh, in this great country now i want to focus on the one bit that sorry, sorry, sorry. i don't know sorry to cut you off there's there's one more there's one more portion in this in this relationship in this angle which is why i call it the nehru mountbatten axis kyunki sirf ye teen jan ka nahi hai isme indira yeah. bhi involved hai yeah there is involvement of indira ji also i don't know in what context some of these authors have written about it but they said that not only the, so the two women influencing pandit ji 
for Edwina at that point in time. And second was his daughter, and his daughter was getting influenced by another man, by the communications head of Mountbatten's team. He, some of these authors have said that he was a regular at the Nehru breakfast table, um, and he would influence Indira. So we saw the quote. Kya ata tha ke, matlab, kya hai wo? There's no clarity. But he had a very close relationship with Indira. He would convince Indira regularly at the Nehru breakfast table about whatever they needed to convince her. Um, so she would then, in turn, convince her father, and then Edwina would do the same thing. It's just, it's, it's just messed up. So you know, for people who don't understand that, so I'll read the references. Pamela Mountbatten, India remembered a personal account of the Mountbattens during the transfer of power. This is by Pavilion Books, London, two thousand seven. This is on page eighteen. For those who want to know the page number, also this is on page eighteen. Then Leonard Mosley, the last days of the British Raj. This is Harcourt, Brace and World Inc., New York, nineteen sixty one, page one zero two. And on CBN, CNN, and IBN, Pamela Mountbatten. On twenty second July two thousand seven, has actually given an interview where she basically says this, right? Yeah, to Karan Thapar. So basically, that these are the places. Now, why these things matter is because people don't realize that recently. I'll tell you why. Recently, there was this scientist who was busted in Maharashtra. I don't know if you remember the news. He was honey trapped by the Pakistanis. and that scientist gave away indian secrets and there was so much of a halla gulla in this country look at what the government is doing and by the way it was a fair criticism if you ask me yo the government better watch out the scientist is sleeping around with random pakistanis and giving them my state secrets i care yeah. idhar to i care matlab idhar to prime minister is only doing that yeah <laughs> The prime minister and his daughter were honey trapped. So I mean, how the hell am I not supposed to care about this? Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's absolutely batshit crazy that people think, oh, Kushal, you are all talking about this. You are all giving this to the media. Now, you have to talk about it. These these things matter. शुक्र करो मुझे तो पॉलिटिशियंस के बारे में इतना गंध पता है मैं तो कुछ भी नहीं बोलता हूं या सो व्हेन आई वाज राइटिंग दीस सेक्शंस इट वाज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू क्लीन अप द लैंग्वेज इन व्हिच आई वाज राइटिंग इट बिकॉज़ वी वर राइटिंग आई मीन आई वाज राइटिंग अबाउट टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ आवर कंट्री सो हाउ डू यू राइट अबाउट ऑल ऑफ दिस विदाउट यूजिंग द वर्ड सेक्स हनी ट्रैप अफेयर Yeah, basically. I mean, and listen, we have to talk about this. He was the freaking prime minister, or to be prime. I mean, what the hell? What, what, what am I supposed to just shut up about it, not care about it? And now people will be like, "Oh, I can tell you stories about other prime ministers mm-hmm. in India." My answer, even there, would be the same. You muppet. My answer would be the same, even there. Yes. 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 So that, that that's the whole point. But now I want to focus on something very important. Very few people again. See it. It would have been fashionable if I would have told you to talk about buffers, two G, Gandhi. Ye wo. No, no. I want to take about which is why I spoke about scams. That maybe now this is one thing I know a lot of young kids may not know about. So these are eight prominent industrialists. Academicians, thinkers of that time, in 1944 and 45, namely J R D Tata, G D Birla, Sir Arthur Shir Dalal, Lala Shri Ram, Kasturi Bhai, Lal Bhai, D Shroff, John Mathai, and Pushpatan Das Thakur Das, they had given a proposal in two parts, which was called a brief memorandum outlining a plan of economic development for India. Which was also famously called the Bombay Line Plan. Okay, yeah, political nerds might know this, but Priyam, tell what the Bombay Plan proposed, and then tell what the actual government did, and then 
बाकी तो हमारी जिंदगी वैसे ही झंड है तो बाकी उसका फाइनल रिजल्ट तो लोगों को वैसे ही दिख गया सो द बॉम्बे प्लान एसेंशियली इन शॉर्ट बेसिकली सिंस इट वाज अ मिक्स ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव माइंड्स एंड द टॉप बिजनेसमैन ऑफ आवर कंट्री हु केयर्ड अबाउट द ग्रोथ ऑफ आवर कंट्री हाउ द कंट्री एंड द इकॉनमी शुड बी रन आफ्टर द कंट्री बिकम्स फ्री सो दे टू गॉट टुगेदर एंड दे प्रपोज दिस Uh, how to set up industry? How industry can drive growth? फिर वो growth drive करके जो पैसा आएगा वो गरीबों को कैसे जाना चाहिए It was a proper plan, um, which was not capitalist. It wasn't totally socialist. It was a good combination. It was well thought out, uh, and it was thought out by some of our smartest economic minds. लेकिन वो प्लान आया उसी वक्त अराउंड उसी वक्त पंडित जी वॉज गेटिंग वेरी वेरी इंफ्लुएंस बाई हाउ द सोवियट रन द इकोनॉमी एंड ही गॉट जेलेट ऑफ दिस पीपल कमिंग आउट विद दिस विद दिस बॉम्बे प्लान ही डिंट लाइक द पब्लिसिटी दैट दे वॉर गेटिंग ही डिंट लाइक द एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी दैट द बॉम्बे प्लान वॉज गेटिंग और एसेंशियली मतलब वो किल कर दिया उस बॉम्बे प्लान को लेट्स पुट इट दैट ही किल एंड इन टर्न इट्स नॉट लाइक ही पुट इन यू नो अनदर ग्रुप ऑफ रियली स्मार्ट पीपल इन प्लेस टू गिव अनदर अल्टरनेट ऑप्शन ऑफ हाउ द इकोनॉमी शुड बी रन विद अ कॉम्बिनेशन की इंडस्ट्री को कैसे ड्राइव करो और गरीबों को फिर उस पे से पैसा आप कैसे इट वॉज इन दैट ही लिटरली जस्ट सेड कैपिटलिज्म इज रॉन्ग industry is wrong capitalism is a bad word profit is a bad word nobody should be doing business and making money in this country only government should be doing business and distributing the money to the people aur us hisab se unhone economy ko structure kiya so how how did what, what were the after effects of that now uh, i think uh, i would give some credit to nehru i think the iits and a bit of uh, things okay i understand there One i think IIT. credit kushal ban iit jo ek matlab kuch to diya usne <laughs> we have very low standards you see in this country <laughs> priyam is like kushal agar tu mere samne hota na to main tujhe noch lo <laughs> i'm glad you took this digitally ek iit aur ek ek matlab hospital gaya hai unhone country ko matlab aaj unke spokesperson itna chilla chilla kar bolte hai ki private pandit ji kitne visionary the iit to humne diya hai you know aims to humne diya hai ek diya hai bhai ek <laughs> but ओके आई विल गिव नेहरू वन क्रेडिट ओके द हिंदू कोर्ट बिल वो उसमें मैं उसको क्रेडिट दूंगा जमींदारी निकालने का भी आई थिंक सेंसिबल लुक एट पाकिस्तान उन्होंने आज तक जमींदारी नहीं निकाली वो वो मतलब अभी नाउ यू विल सी क्या तुम्हारा स्टैंडर्ड पाकिस्तान है नहीं मेरा स्टैंडर्ड पाकिस्तानी आई एम जस्ट सेइंग फ्यू राइट थिंग्स वर डन बट एज फार एज नेहरूवियन सोशलिज्म इज कंसर्न लाइक व्हाट वाज हिज लाइक ओके यू नो बड़े मियां तो बड़े मियां तो मगर डॉटर ने भी बैंड बजा दी अब वो नेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ बैंक्स एक बड़ा ही फैसिनेटिंग व्हाई इज इंडिया नेवर डिबेटेड दैट वन फाइन डे इंदिरा गांधी जस्ट वुक अप एंड एंड यू नो नो मुरारजी भाई एंड इंदिरा गांधी बेसिकली द स्प्लिट हैपेंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट मूव राइट नेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ बैंक्स और वो सब को लेके मुरारजी भाई एंड इंदिरा गांधी स्प्लिट बट ये मतलब ये क्या फैमिली थी इनको सोशलिज्म से इतना प्यार क्या था तुम्हारे रिसर्च में कुड यू फाइंड आउट व्हाट वाज देयर लव फॉर सोशलिज्म सोशलिज्म तो वो सोवियत से आ रहा था ना तो सोवियत वो होस्टिंग देम देवर इंदिरा हैड अ वीकनेस अपेरेंटली फॉर हॉट गाइस सो दे वर सराउंडिंग हर विद रियली हॉट मेन या शी इज रिटन अबाउट इट शी इज रिटन इन अ लेटर टू हर फादर आई एम नॉट इनवेंटिंग दिस इंफॉर्मेशन सो शी इज रिटन सो द सोवियत्स वर रियली कोटिंग देम और ये लोग मतलब इनफेचुएट हो गए उनसे इनको समझ में नहीं आया कि हम गरीब देश है हमारा हम अमीर देश हम अमीर भारतवर्ष थे जिसकी वजह से मतलब सेंचुरी तक हमें लूटा गया लेकिन जब तक अंग्रेज चले गए तब तक तो वी वर मतलब मोस्ट ऑफ आर वेल्थ हैड बीन लूटेड तो हम गरीब देश थे उस वक्त तो अगर आप 
if you are not going to set up a system to make and create wealth, then how are you going to distribute that wealth? There's no logic in that. Yeah, so their solution for creating this wealth is a government wealth create. So, mm. I mean, how, so, so essentially that logic, you know, that whether the government cannot do the job of an expert, like a businessman, the way a businessman and an industry, uh, an industrialist and their ecosystem can create, whether the government can't do it, right? So, SIUA, which is why all of these public sector companies were set up. Now, let's talk about bank nationalization and a little bit of a backdrop of the bank nationalization, which I found interesting when I was writing about it. So, we had so band bad in terms of paise. Like, we had no money, uh, not even enough to buy food for our people or ensure that there was enough food for our people. So Indira Gandhi went to the American president to ask for loan for food safety. Okay, for our people. And uh, I think it was President Lyndon Johnson, I think, at that time when she first went. And Uswak, the New York Times wrote a piece when she was in the United States. Indian Prime Minister comes begging. <clears throat> the loan was given and uh, there was some, you know, she had to devalue the rupee as part of the transaction as against the loan that was given. And she did it because my Now she was getting very attacked by the party that you have moved away from our ideals of socialism. We have gone to capitalist America because that time capitalist was a bad word, remember. We have gone to capitalist America. Ab capitalist America, hamare bare mein sa likh hai. Indian Prime Minister comes begging. Aapne wo bheek ke paise liye hai. Wo bheek ke paise ke wajah se aapne rupee ko devalue kiya hai. So she was under a lot of attack. And she needed to prove her socialist credentials desperately. So in a quick fix move. She nationalized the banks. Yeah, but I think it was a terrible move. And and I don't know why as a country we have never spoken about it. But talking about Americans, can I I have to read this bit also. See, when you mention something, then I get reminded, Are ha Priyam ne ye book me likha tha. Uh, I wanted to talk about the Kennedy Nehru bit and how Kennedy found Nehru. This was this was fantastic, this bit in the book. I had highlighted the whole page. Kennedy's leanings towards India were present despite the inauspicious start to the relationship with Nehru during his first meeting with the latter in 1951. Back then, the former had given a congressman and the US embassy had convinced Nehru to give him an audience. Jacqueline Kennedy recounted what, that while briefing them, the embassy staff had told Kennedy that, quote, whenever Nehru gets bored with you, he taps his fingertips together and looks up at the ceiling. Wow, this, look at the attention to detail. She added that after only 10 minutes with Kennedy, quote, Nehru started to look up at the ceiling and began tapping his fingertips. Despite Kennedy's clear leanings demonstrated by helping India against China, Nehru showed no intention of altering his basic policy of non-alignment. Kennedy's promise aid came through in April 1961, half a million dollars in development loans and the other half a million in food assistance. Despite this, Nehru maintained a stoic distance from the U.S. It is at this time that he visited Washington, D.C. along with Indra and his cousin Braj Kumar Nehru, who was made India's first ambassador to the U.S. The visit turned out to be a disaster. Even as President Kennedy engaged him in conversation, Nehru responded in monosyllables or said nothing at all. The U.S. ambassador to India, John Kenneth Galbraith recounted, quote, Nehru simply did not respond. Question after question, he answered with monosyllables or a sentence or two. The president found it very discouraging. The American opinion was that, quote, the meeting convinced him, Kennedy, that Nehru would never be a strong read on which to rely. Kennedy also told Galbraith after later that it was the worst state visit of his presidency and that Nehru seemed more interested in talking with Jackie then with him again i want to read each and every source 
that you have created. This is Jacqueline Kennedy, Historic Conversations of Life with John F. Kennedy by Hyperion, New York. This is 2011. Then John Kenneth Galbraith, Ambassador's Journal of Personal Account of the Kennedy Year, Horton Mifflin, Boston, 1989. And Stanley Wolpert, Nehru, A Tryst with Just Destiny, Oxford. This is 1996. Either bhai, Jacqueline ke isme interested tha, matlab, wo... This is why I I and then Jackie came to India for a visit by herself. Okay. And, and uh, Pandiji, in his, when Jackie came to see him, he had pictures of both of them on the walls. <laughs> This is this is this is like a this is such a desi thing to do. I want to impress this girl. Kya karu? Chal, main sara photo <laughs> laga. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god. <laughs> so I had Jackie had such a great time because she was treated so well. There were pictures of her in the prime minister's house and all of that. Oh, <laughs> that. Oh, there's evidence now that she's saying that I had a great state visit and she was much touted by international media and US media that Jackie has solved the India-US relationship problem with that visit. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, what do I say to such? I mean, this family has <laughs> given us a cow. Well, you're the prime minister, you photo like that. But at the same time, you have to understand how much of a hatred Nehru had for capitalism and because of capitalism of America, which is why I wanted to read the whole thing. Like, you know, the one question is our people and uh, your book has raised this. What if Sardar Patel was the prime minister? What if he yes. was the prime minister? I definitely feel we may not have been capitalist. We may have been way more, uh, way better than the socialism that Nehru and then Indra practice all this time. And uh, read these excerpts. You re look at the economic policy making of India in its early, uh, early years. And, and year after year, year after year, you know, every time people criticize the Gandhi's, uh, Gandhi Nehru family, whatever you want. Emergency लगा दी ये कर मतलब emergency तो एक है भाई सबसे बड़ा पाप तो उन्होंने जो socialism किया ना उन्होंने हमारी ठोक ही दी पूरी society की ठोक दी हमारी totally totally and if if Sardar Patel was prime minister see he had a very good hold on how money can be generated for the party ये मतलब ये उनका काम था he was the first he was the money man of the Congress he was running the Congress financially, you know, so he knew exactly how to generate money, how to distribute money to candidates. Like he, he was the go-to man for that. You know, he had a relationship with all the industrialists. He knew what was needed in the country to, you know, for the country to generate wealth from industry. He knew all of that. So he would have definitely brought in that experience and perspective. Yeah, which is... <laughs> और उन्होंने yeah. ही तो देश को बाल्कनाइज होने से बचाया है मतलब नेहरू जी ने तो 46 में लिख दिया था दैट इंडिया व्हेन द ब्रिट्स आस्क्ड हिम दैट यू टेल अस हाउ डू वी फ्री यू हाउ डू वी फ्री इंडिया इन अ 3000 पेज लेटर ही हैज रिटन दैट यू डिवाइड द कंट्री इन मल्टीपल पार्ट्स वन पार्ट इज पाकिस्तान लेट द छोटा-छोटा प्रिंसली स्टेट्स मेक अ ग्रुप एंड बिकम वन you know, entity in whichever places the small, small groups are there. Let the bigger princely states like Kashmir, Hyderabad, etc. form different sovereign, uh, you know, nations. So, unka to full plan tha, balkanize karne ka, ye subcontinent ko. Do you think Nehru was in such a hurry to be a prime minister in your assessment? I mean, can we uh, objectively prove that? I don't know, but... Whenever I have read history, political history and all these kinds of books, I come across only one thing that Nehru was in such a hurry to be a prime minister that he's like, yeah, bhoot nahi, bhoot ka langoti sahi. 
तो मतलब पूरा देश नहीं तो चल जो मिले काट कुट के मैं ले लू लाइक ही हैड नो ग्रैंड प्लान ही जस्ट वांटेड टू बी द प्राइम मिनिस्टर या एंड व्हाई बिकॉज़ ही वांटेड टू शो हिमसेल्फ एज अ ग्लोबल स्टेट्समैन दैट इज द लेगेसी दैट ही डेस्परेटली दैट ही डेस्परेटली वांटेड टू लीव बिहाइंड और वो लेगेसी लीव बिहाइंड करने के लिए उनको प्राइम मिनिस्टर बनना पड़ता मतलब दैट वाज लाइक a requirement to leave the global statesman legacy behind i mean you know i i definitely don't enjoy this like i have always said this like if i am outside india i will still stand up for my prime ministers even if they are congressmen like i'll stand up for nehru uh, also i will but he makes it so hard <laughs> it's he makes it really so hard, hard. he makes and it so hard know, like i, I like... can defend dr singh dr manmohan singh we can defend but yes. nehru no yeah no no and uh, see i think despite the fact that there was basically except newspapers and some radio there was no way to spread information quickly amongst com- common country men but to realize that by the time nehru got the third term his uh, vote share had decreased considerably so log bhi samajh gaye ऐसा नहीं कि लोग नहीं समझे इन अ टाइम व्हेन देयर वाज एसेंशियली नो ऑपोजिशन यू नो नेहरूज वोट शेयर वेंट डाउन सो मच बिकॉज़ द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री रियलाइज कि मतलब ये तो गलती हो गई या आई मीन आई जस्ट लाइक इफ व्हेन आई वाज रीडिंग योर बुक एंड इट्स लाइक ये कैसे होता है ना कई बार आपको ऐसे दर्द होते हैं सो so, आप वो दर्द दबा के भूल जाते हो एंड देन रीडिंग योर बुक वाज लाइक हाय हाय सब कुछ याद आ गया मुझे वापस <laughs> <laughs> सारे दुख दर्द पीड़ा सब कुछ वापस बाहर आ गई आई मीन एंड 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 द बेस्ट पार्ट यू नो आई वांट टू अप्रिशिएट दिस व्हाइल वी आर रिकॉर्डिंग दिस इट गुड थिंग यू हैव गिवन रेफरेंसेस फॉर एवरीथिंग बिकॉज़ व्हाट दीस पीपल डू इज दे विगल आउट ऑफ इट बाय सेइंग रेफरेंस किधर एंड गुड यू हैव गिवन रेफरेंसेस थ्रू बुक्स रिटन बाय फैमिली मेंबर्स and through committee reports and many other things and media reporters of that time because the biggest thing these days that people do is that they don't give references which is why the book a book is powerful and i and i want to appreciate that thing that when you give citations they can't shut you up you have citations for everything which is why even in this podcast i made sure i read the citations that you have mentioned as like ja ja jhagda kar le uske sath jisne likha usse jhagda karna mere piche ke pada hua हां क्योंकि मैं एक्सपेक्ट कर रही थी व्हेन आई वाज राइटिंग दिस बुक आई न्यू इट दैट इफ आई डोंट गिव साइटेशंस द अटैक दैट विल कम माय वे इज दैट यू आर नॉट अ हिस्टोरियन हु आर यू टू से दिस यू आर रॉन्ग इजीएस्ट वे टू यू नो टू टू नलिफाई समबडीज वर्क सो आई एग्री आई एम नॉट अ हिस्टोरियन बट आई हैव कलेक्टेड इंफॉर्मेशन दैट वेरी गुड हिस्टोरियंस एंड फैमिली मेंबर्स हैव रिटन आई हैव कलेक्टेड इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम पीपल from your side of the spectrum your supporters you know today who are your party leaders have taken their work and put it in mind and re- give given references so i'm not pretending to be a historian i'm just compiling information now let's take a f- questions for uh viewers so i think Nehru here is Arun Nehru. What is the story of Arun Nehru name being uh, fa- uh, named falsely for the Masjid Gate opening? What is this story? The Babri, uh, the Tali. So hmm. uh, you know. So interestingly, Mani Shankar Iyer released a book about a few months ago, where hmm. he essentially said Rajiv Gandhi had nothing to do with. Hmm. Uh, you know ताले खुलने से राजीव गांधी ने ना अरुण नेहरू got it done so uh, essentially that so basically they are putting the whole blame on अरुण नेहरू that he is the creator of this problem राजीव गांधी did not uh, appease to the Hindu vote bank because of the Shah Bano fallout Fair enough. All right. The next question is, <laughs> what if you no know, M K Gandhi? Here is an idea for the next book. Hmm. Interesting. I think uh, uh, 
I understand a lot of this, right? People criticizing Gandhi ji for a lot of things. I, I, I've uh, criticized Gandhi ji a lot too, but I think people don't realize that Gandhi ji did not put a gun on anybody's head and uh, said, "Tum ye karo mere liye, tum wo karo mere liye." You know, it was all out in the open. Uh, it was a, you know, a jostle, a political jostle for ideas, and Gandhi ji won in the end, fair and square. And uh, yes, Gandhi ji's mistakes uh, of. electing nehru again yeah. and again cost us deeply uh, gandhi ji and his absurd ideas on non violence also were uh, there gandhi ji was an anti vaxer yeah. but then gandhi ji also did a lot of good things uh, gandhi ji and the pune pact uh, what about its impact on the hindu society where he had the pune pact with Am- ambedkar what if ambedkar would have had his way and we have, would have had separate electorates what would have happened to the hindu society in india then so i think sometimes i think we are unfair to yeah. gandhi ji we should no, be balanced in our critique and we have to give it to see we have to admit two things gandhi ji was the only leader at that time successful in rallying the nation behind one cause okay he had that type of mass appeal okay and second until now until we've had prime minister modi Mahatma Gandhi remains a singular major brand to come out of India. You know, so you have to give it to him that you know he was the people's person. He was able to rally people of multiple nationalities behind whatever causes he chose to rally them behind. Fair enough. Uh, what was Mahatma Gandhi's compulsion to bow before the demands or get influenced by uh, Motilal Nehru? to push promote jawaharlal nehru against sardar patel it was purely because motilal ji was funding him or maybe gandhi ji genuinely like jawaharlal nehru sometimes he just like people right yeah 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 it could be you know because Jaw- jawaharlal nehru also you know he was like he was an englishman he said he's a, he, he himself says that i am the last englishman to rule india So he was very like non-Indian-ish. It's a मतलब गोरा बच्चे आ गए इधर उसको थोड़ा acclimatize करने में help करते हैं उस उसमें जरा सा I think लगाव बढ़ गया होगा. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So was political was the political class so ignorant at that time? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. No, not all of them. Um. So. some people like netaji subhash chandra bose uh, who disagreed with this uh, ignorance that the <clears throat> congress was sort of you know going into loops and loops of, he, he just didn't have the patience for them he said mai apna karunga and he bounced you know and he was able to see the geopolitics of everything which is why he bounced and which is why he did what he did from outside the country but um, As far as Congress is concerned, it was Jawaharlal Nehru ji who considered himself as an expert in geopolitics. He he has said this many times, and he has and he got everybody to believe that geopolitical decisions or foreign affairs decisions to who he led it because who he expert is because who Englishy is good. Okay, Englishy बोलने से आदमी expert हो जाता है. अभी तब तो तब तो that was the belief that you know that's what he made people believe. Yeah. Okay, so all right. So, one more question was. Let me let me find it. That because I like that question. I'm looking for. Ah, yar, kider gaya. Oh, damn it! I missed the question because uh, in the meantime, used to like Morarji Desai was a prime example of at least at that time there was uh, a lot of you know back and forth in the Congress party. and that was the birth of congress i do you think there were any other attempts in the latter history of congress to take congress rest congress back pranab kharji tried or did p c dambaram tried or anybody else in your research did you find that out um, abhi na the g23 letter that was written a few years ago saying that the whole organizational shake up should be happen should happen and um, everything all the voting all the posts ऊपर से लेके नीचे तक शुड बी फिल्ड डेमोक्रेटिकली 
without influence of the gandhi nehru family this was a very serious attempt by the 23 leaders of the congress 23 senior leaders of the congress to wrest the party back from the nehru gandhi family control okay this question this was uh... uh as i i finally found the question somebody has said in your research on jawaharlal nehru what did you like about jawaharlal nehru itni band bajayi hai jawaharlal nehru ki <laughs> what did i like about jawaharlal nehru um i think he was a unapologetic romantic agar rajneeti nahi karte aur kavitaye likhte <laughs> शायर ही तो अच्छी कर लेता है आपको रात को लेटर अच्छा प्रधानमंत्री बट ऑन अ वेरी सीरियस नोट इन योर रिसर्च आई होप यू डिट नॉट है गो थ्रू दो लेटर्स ऑल्सो गॉड No, no, thank God for that. That would have been cringe, bro, Max. <laughs> oh my God, oh man, it, it, it's crazy. Chalo, before we wrap up, uh, Priyam. So, the uh, two-part question. First, what was the most uh, rewarding aspect of researching for this book? That is question one. And then, what is up next now after this book? so the most rewarding aspect of this is that uh aise bahut si jaise maine pehle hi confess kiya hai ki i am not a historian so i would read current affairs issues in the news or listen to it in the news and mujhe na itna context nahi pata hota tha you know i would just know the basic information about a certain issue that was being talked about in the news and i would just make an opinion on that लेकिन ये लिखने के बाद और ये सब रिसर्च करने के बाद आई एम होपिंग द रीडर्स विल आल्सो फाइंड दिस हेल्पफुल दैट व्हेन दे रीड सेम न्यूज अबाउट चाइना अरुणाचल में कुछ क्लेम कर रहा है या फिर यू नो पीओके के बारे में कुछ बातें चल रही है या एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा सो आई फील दैट इट इज दिस गिव्स लाइक अ शॉर्ट कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ सम ऑफ दोस इश्यूज दैट आर स्टिल इन डिस्कशन ये खालिस्तानी बाकी बाहर लोगों को क्यों अटैक कर रहे हैं हमारे देश के यू नो फॉरेन सर्विस ऑफिशियल्स को एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा so this book at least this i feel successfully gives a nice short context enough that you need to know when you read these current affairs items um in the news today yeah and what next uh up to matlab election ke baad thoda political writing se break lungi aur um, i think my uh my fifth book that i'm planning to write is uh, a religious book so hmm. good I good I, 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 to, to much much to their shock that's interesting because you've consistently written about either economics or pol- politics or policy you've you've pretty much stuck to that well that that's yeah. interesting i look forward to it priya thank you thank you thank you so i realize that you know uh, there's not enough information about uh, uh, the history and the stories around devi worship and uh, i think i want to write on that nice nice i i look forward to reading it priyam it was an absolute pleasure to read your book i had a great time 
and uh, i wish you nothing but success it uh, and next time hopefully we'll do it in person i know we wanted to do it in person the recording of this podcast but we could not because of uh, scheduling issues but next time we'll try to do the podcast in person and uh, uh, and uh, keep writing don't stop uh, writing books and don't uh, stop the <clears throat> uh, uh, at which you write books also and i wish you nothing but the best and once again thank you for coming Thank you, Kushal, for having me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up. But before we wrap up the podcast, once again, I want to remind all of you in the description of the podcast, uh, uh, there are links to uh, Priyam's uh, X handle or Twitter handle. Also, there is a link to buy the book. So if you are interested, do go click on the link and buy the book. It's a wonderful read. You will get to know many things that in, in, in a lot of times in uh, pop culture-ish political history, we don't know. So you will get to know uh, the journey of India because she starts pre-partition and then comes to the current day India and the decisions and uh, of the Congress. The you know it's very interesting because my mother used to be a Congress voter and then she flipped uh, in the last two decades to be a BJP voter. And uh, I've seen the change in my mother. I, I still have my uncle who's a Congress voter. I have my father's one of my father's best friends is a Congress voter and and. I am not someone who who is opposed to the idea of being friends with people. At the same time, I do believe that the deeds of the Congress need to be read and studied as a political hist uh, political uh, student. Because if you do that, and this book does a great job of collating a lot of incidents in our history. When you do that, you will realize. So do buy this book. It, it's it's a very easy, fun read. And as far as I'm concerned, if you can support the Charvak podcast, because the aim of this podcast is try to encourage authors more. That is one of the central themes of this podcast, which is why every month we have at least two to three discussions on book or books or it sometimes even more than three. I will consistently pursue this, this journey of talking to authors, reading books is because until you don't read, you don't learn. वो दस मिनट के वीडियो में आपको कुछ नहीं मिलेगा पॉडकास्ट में भी उससे ज्यादा मिलेगा मगर बुक जितना नहीं मिलेगा विच इज वाई ऑलवेज से कीप रीडिंग बुक्स सो इफ यू कैन सपोर्ट दिस पॉडकास्ट डू ज्वाइन द मेंबरशिप प्रोग्राम ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट और जस्ट लाइक द वीडियो सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड इफ यू आर एन ऑडियो लिस्नर जस्ट रीवर रेटिंग आई सी यू गाइज नेक्स्ट टाइम अंटिल देन नमस्ते टेक केयर बाय